And welcome back to Square Off. Call it a sign of troubled times. Arizona's new driver's manual has do's and don'ts for armed drivers who are stopped by police. Here are some of the tips. Keep your hands on the wheel in a visible location. Tell the officer you have a firearm and where it is. Don't reach around inside the vehicle and don't get out of the vehicle unexpectedly. State Representative Reginald Bowling of Levine worked on the language in the training manual. He joins us this morning. Good to see you again. Thanks for having me. So I was checking, it was a year ago this month, I was interviewing you and you said you had just left a meeting with Governor Doug Ducey, who was concerned about the police shootings around the country and here in Phoenix. He brought together different leaders, African-American leaders and, and, and others. Did this come out of that meeting? So uh, just to clarify, uh, African-American leaders uh, reached out to the governor's office uh, to, to basically say that we were not uh, excited about, you know, the direction that we've seen from a state level, local level regarding the officer involved shootings. In that meeting, I had a conversation and I quite frankly told the governor that uh, there are a number of solutions that we can move forward. And uh, this was actually one of the solutions that I was interested in making it a bill for the upcoming session. OK, so it wasn't a bill, but you, you went ahead and did it a different way with ADOT and and um, DPS? Yeah, bills are very tough in the state legislature, especially for Democrats. Uh, so what I found that there was another route that we could actually do in order to make this language a reality um, and working through DPS and ADOT, we were actually able to move forward there and make this policy change. OK, we'll get to more on the policy in a minute. But you said it was the shooting of Philando Castile that got this going. Uh, that's well known, but what's the situation here in Phoenix when it comes to shootings by officers? You know, what we've seen uh, throughout the country and even here in Arizona, which is actually closer to home, is that there's been officer involved shootings, whether they're um, inside of uh, vehicles, whether they're actually um, in incidents in which individuals, they're on feet, they're in their foot. Um, it's a problem. And any time that the nation sees or witnesses uh, a shooting, especially the one like Philandro Castillo, we have to look for solutions to move forward. So you spoke to eight police departments. So I reached out to, to police departments here, uh, eight police departments here in, in uh, the state. Um, got eight different answers on what recommendations were that you should actually have when you are stopped by police. Which so was, do, do the police, yeah. does the police see it as a problem that we live in a state that has relatively loose gun laws and where, where many drivers may be armed? Do they see that as a challenge dealing with drivers like that? You know, we didn't get into whether or not it's a, it's a challenge that individuals may have guns on them with this being an open carry state. Um, but we know that, well, I know that in that Philandro Castillo situation, uh, there was a gun there. Um, but what's more important is we have to also make sure on the other end that our officers, they recognize and they exercise patience and they realize that individuals have rights. Individuals have rights to carry guns in their cars. Individuals have rights to ask questions why they're stopped. And individuals have rights to not consent if that's not the situation. So, so uh, talk about that because one of the criticisms of the manual is it doesn't do enough to tell uh, drivers what their rights are. It's more how to behave when you're with a police officer as opposed to here are your rights when you're right. you know, so, pulled so, over by a cop. You, you know, I, I like to use this phrase that, you know, I can walk and chew gum at the same time. There are a number of different reforms that uh, myself and other members of our community we're looking to actually move forward and usher forward uh, through the next several years, you know, making sure that our law enforcement officers um, have, you know, implicit bias training, ensuring that our law enforcement officers have an opportunity to really build relationships with community. Those are absolutely at the front of the forefront, but we need to make sure on all ends that we're creating a better situation. And for those who say this is an attack on people who have guns, who carry guns legally, it's part of BLM, Black Lives Matter, that agenda, what's your response? I think that's people talking out of the side of their neck right now. Um, what this is, is a, a policy change to save lives. Um, I don't care if you're, uh, if you're black, white, Latino, native, this is to save lives in order to make sure that our officers, uh, they actually have a common understanding of what our citizens are being told and citizens have an understanding of how police officers are being trained. It's an educational resource, one of many uh, that I'll be pushing throughout uh, the rest of this year and then next year as well. All right, Representative Reginald Bolding, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for having me.